Hi, this video is to show you some tips on making these pieces of pie blocks. So this is um, the way you're gonna make it and you're gonna make four blocks this month. So uh, we're gonna start from the beginning. You're gonna cut, first you're gonna cut your strips of color. There's gonna be eight pieces of color. Whoops, sorry, knocked the camera. Um, eight strips and you're going to use this 45 degree ruler. So when you place this on your strip, you're gonna put the edge, the little edge on one side, and you're gonna put the three and a half inch mark on the other side, okay? So this is your strip going that way. You'll get one, two, three strips, sorry, three wedges out of one strip, okay? And then you're going to sew your, your wedges together. So you're going to first sew them in sets of two. So here's two. When I sew my sets, I sew from the fat end down to the little end when I'm doing the sets of two. Then when I'm doing the sets of four, so this is your quarter circle, then you're gonna sew a half circle. And these colors are not um, the same as yours, but I did them this way because of when I was figuring stuff out. But when you're sewing two to two, you're gonna place them right sides together and you're going to line up this seam so that it is laying right on top of the seam below. If I get it a little bit wiggy whack, you know, so if it's not exactly on top, then that creates a bad point. So you're going to have your point designated after this step. So let's look at this point. I hope you can see it. It's not a very good point. And so what happened was when I laid this piece on top of this piece, I didn't get this exactly lined up straight. So you can, um, when you're doing that, I actually unpicked this so that I can show you. So when you lay this one on top of here, you're going to lay it on there and you're going to pull it back and you're gonna make sure that that looks perfect right there. And then if you want, you can put a little pin to hold it and then you're gonna look again and you're gonna make sure, you're gonna look from both sides to make sure that that seam is totally lined up across. And then when I sew this seam, I sew from the little end out to the big end. And that's because this is the most important part. This is the part that I have to keep secure. So if I do that at the very first, then I will be able to um, keep it in line. And this might be confusing for you because I have my threads. I sewed it together on this side before, now it's gonna be on this side. Um, but I don't worry so much about keeping the whole thing in line you know, like right out here, after I sew for a half inch, I can straighten this up and make sure that this continued seam is nice and straight. Use your seam guide. Make sure that your seam is the same thickness here as it is here. And make sure that your seams are going nice and straight. We have a tendency to take too deep of a seam in here or on one edge or the other. It's usually the edge that we're driving off of. The drive on is usually a pretty good seam allowance, but then we tend to get a little fatter as we end. So just make sure that you line this seam up with this seam and pin it if you want. Usually I can hold it pretty good. So that seam that I showed you, that intersection was not a good one. This is really, this one was good. And see the difference? This finished wedge and this finished wedge have the exact same point right there. Okay, so if you have good points here, then you're going to be able to sew two halves together and make those a good point. So we're gonna do the same thing here. We're going to put this one half on top of the other half. We're going to make sure that that center seam lines up and then we're going to get up here close and we're gonna make sure that this point, so I put a pin through there, and then I put a pin through this one, and I make sure that 
it's nice and straight across from each other. I pinch it and I open it up and I kind of see, ooh, yeah. So what happens usually is that this point, this point doesn't line up with the point on the back. And so sometimes they're deeper or shallower this way from the seam allowance into that point. And so just make sure that you get it lined up as best you can. If you are super fussy about this, sew from here to here and then open it up and see if it's good. And if that point is good, then go back and sew the whole entire seam. So that's a few tips on getting your wedges and your points nice and straight. And I do want you to notice mine are not perfect. And that's okay, they look perfect enough, all right? Okay, so that's enough about the pies. When you get them to this point right here, they're this octagon shaped, okay? So I gave you a pattern to cut a piece of freezer paper out with a seam allowance around it. That's this piece. You'll notice how it's super close to the edge of this. These are a perfect size. What you're going to do is I iron the freezer paper onto my, <clears throat> excuse me, octagon shaped circle. And then you're just gonna trim this with a pair of scissors. So you just can trim, you know, just outside of that, all right? Then you'll end up with a trimmed circle like this. And then we're gonna use template applique in order to press over our seam allowances. I should have mentioned also that from the back, all the seams are pressed open and that will help you to get your centers a little bit nice. Plus it reduces bulk right here in the middle. Okay, so let me show you now how to get the template for the inside circle. So this is a piece of cereal box cardboard. The lighter the cardboard weight, like a small box of cereal, is lighter weight than a big box of cereal. So like a Costco box that has the big multi-pack in it, that cardboard is a little heavy. So you want to make sure that there's no black printing right here because if there is black printing on the inside of your cereal box, it will fade off onto your other stuff. And then I just got my second copy of my template page and I pressed it onto my cardboard with an iron. You don't have to press it super good because you want it to peel off. Um, but that's how I got this shape. And then I cut um, just inside of that um, inside black line, okay? So what that does is this is my fabric template and this is my press over template, okay? All right, so then I'm going to get some spray starch and I use a paintbrush. You can just spray the edges if you'd like, but I like to paint my edges. So I just take it and I dip my paintbrush in and I go just over the seam allowance area. And I make sure that my, my intersections are all still laying open. And to just get this so that it's dippable instead of dipping into the bottle, which has a really small opening, I just squirt it into a little bowl. And this is a round paintbrush. Okay, I need my ironing board, so let me get it over here. To save your ironing board from getting super starchy, put a piece of paper towel or a, a little rag, you know, a dish cloth or something under it to kind of help. Okay, I wanna make sure that I'm in the, the view zone here. Okay, I think that'll be good. All right, so I'm gonna just press that open. That's bothering me. All right, so now I've torn my freezer paper off. You don't have to, but it does help. If you're ever going to do this, you can eyeball a seam allowance too. Um, so you can use the smaller circle and eyeball it. Okay, now I just place this down. This is print side up and the fabric is print side down so that wrong sides are together. And then I'm just going to take my iron and I'm going to kind of comb in 
this edge and a little bit at a time, I'm just gonna go around this circle. And if you just are a little bit patient, and give it some time, this will stick really well and it'll press nicely around the whole outside. Now you will end up with a few little spots where it looks like it's going to pleat. Just make sure that the outside edge right here is not pleated. But the seam allowance can be pleated all that you want. So you go clear around. And you press the whole entire circle edge under. And that starch that you've brushed on will just help it stay there. And the printed side of the cardboard tends to get a little bit sticky. So if, you, if you're patient enough, I'm not being very patient right now, but when you're patient enough and you give it time, it'll kind of stick. The fabric will kind of stick to that cardboard and you'll be able to have to peel it off you know kind of loosen the seam allowance okay so see how that's just a nice quarter inch seam allowance and we're ready to let this cool usually I turn it over to the front I give it a good press and I look and see if there's any areas that look like they have an issue so Let's look at this right here. That looks like it's a little bit pointy. And if I look to the back, it's pleated right out there next to the edge. So I can just take my paintbrush. I can re dampen that little spot and press it over again. And that'll get rid of that little point that was on the edge. And I can see that there's another one right here. I'll fix that one. Okay, when I'm ready to applique this, you're going to just let it cool and dry, and then you just pop that out, and you use it on your next one. And if you want, you can repress this. Just make sure that the edges are nice and turned under, and you can give it another quick press, and you're ready to applique it. Okay, now you have prepared your backgrounds already. You've got four of them all cut to the exact size and they should be starched. That will help to keep everything in line. Okay, so I like to fold my piece in half and I give it just a little quick press here on those outside edges just so that I have a reference point of where half and half is. Okay, now you have two choices. You can applique with your seams lined up. So this seam lines up with the pressing. I like them this way. And so I've marked one so that what I did here is I just folded the four opposite wedges seam to seam and I put a pin. So now when I go to press this you know what I need some glue and I don't have any I'm gonna go grab some really quick Sorry about that. I like to glue down my applique because then you can take it with you a little bit easier. All right, so what I'm going to do then is I'm gonna turn this over and I'm going to run a bead of glue just around the seam allowance area. You don't need very much glue. 
Even a few little dots would hold this. You don't want to get close to the edge of where you're actually going to be stitching, so stay away from that folded edge. And I go clear around and just do a little tiny bead of glue. You can see you don't need very much. Okay. Then you're going to take this and you're going to line it up so that those pins are lining up with those little pressing areas. And I am just going to eyeball this. I'm going to take out those pins. And you can scooch it if you feel like it needs to, but it sticks pretty good. And then if you'll just hit it with an iron, that kind of helps really glue it into place. Okay, now we're ready to stitch. So I've got um, a piece of 50 weight thread. I've threaded it up on a straw or a milliner needle. I like a size 10, 9 or 10, whatever you can thread. An 11 is itty bitty, and some of you can do that. I can't. <laughs> okay, I have a knot and I just left that knot in the back and I came through right here in that pressed over seam allowance. Now I'm going to go down just in the background and I'm going to come up an eighth of an inch ahead and I'm going to catch just the end, the very edge of that seam allowance. And that is all that you do to applique, to hand applique. And if you are a beginner appliqueer, doing the template method will help you to um, feel secure about that seam allowance and getting that edge nice and straight instead of needle turning it as you go. And that's a totally good way of applique. I feel like everybody should have several ways to applique. But when you're doing something as easy as a circle, a template applique works the best for me. Okay, one tip I was gonna show you, and this will be hard because I'm using a matching thread. Um, I picked one that will blend in with the background, kind of a medium beige color, just because it won't pop out really bad on the color, but it'll blend in with the background also. So here's my thread. I'm going to pull it straight out and I'm going to insert my needle right behind or to the right of that thread that's going straight up. That way you'll be in the correct position. Um, you don't want to insert your needle ahead or behind a lot where this thread comes out. So if you pull this thread out perpendicular from this edge and you go in right there then that will help you know and please take small stitches I know it's easy to take a big stitch but the smaller the stitches you do the better off your applique will look think one eighth of an inch and that will be perfect don't do them too itty bitty because you don't want them sitting on top of each other but just think about an eighth of an inch and that will be perfect. When I go, when I'm done with my thread and I need to tie off, I go to the back and I just take a little bite of the fabric. I leave a loop and I go through the loop and that's how I tie it off. And then I just scoot through between the back and the applique piece and then cut it off. And that is your piece of pie quilt blocks. Make four of them.